Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So there are many situations where you want to be able to trigger a make scenario or a Zapier workflow with a click of a button from Airtable. And there aren't any direct integrations between Airtable and Make or Airtable and Zapier, but there are a few workarounds that you can deploy to be able to trigger these workflows. And in this video, I want to show you three different approaches that you can take to be able to solve this problem by using native features within Airtable. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so as always, we are going to begin here in the Myro board. And if I sound a little pissed, it's because I'm recording this video for the third time. First time, the software crashed on me, and second time, I forgot to share my screen and I recorded the whole video. So bear with me, I'll do my best to explain everything in detail. Okay, so what we see here is that I have a table here in your table called contacts, and it stores basic information like, let's go back to the data here, the name, email, and phone. Right, so we have the contacts table. And then what we want to do is we want to be able to click any of these buttons. So the three scenarios or three different approaches that I mentioned, we want to be able to invoke any of these three and then essentially trigger this workflow within make. And all I've done here is I've added a webhook and then that webhook accepts a param, which is a name. And then it takes that uh, variable name and returns that in the response with this text called the name is name. So let's see what it does. Copy the address from here, go to a new tab and enter the URL and then name, let's go with John Doe for now. All it does is returns this string, this text that says name is John Doe. And what we want to do also is that after the webhook or the make scenario has successfully run, we want uh, to accept the response from it and then log that output or log that piece of text here in the output box, okay? This won't work for all three situations. It will work for some of them and it won't work for one of them. And it will become clear as we go through them one at a time. Okay, so the situation is clear and it's time to build. So the first approach is a basic approach, what I call the single select or uh, checkbox field approach. It will not look like a button, but it will act like a button. So the way this one works is we are going to add a new field here. Because remember, what we want to do is we want to be able to invoke this button to call the make scenario. So let's just add make here in the middle. So this is make, and it could be zap here, it doesn't matter. There we go. So this goes here in the middle and the button click will trigger this. There we go. And then the output is what we are going to log and it's going to return the output, which we are going to then log back into our table in the output field. So let's add the, let's start with the checkbox approach. And once the checkbox approach, you can do the same with the single select field approach. Let's just call it button in quotes because it's not exactly a button, but it will act like a button. And then here we're just going to, we're just going to add a checkbox. What I want to do is every time I hit this checkbox, I want to trigger this make uh, workflow, right? So, and I only want to do it on when I hit the checkbox because that's just, there's this feeling about hitting a checkbox and triggering a workflow. I don't want to do it on when I uncheck it. I don't want to do that. I only want to do it. That's a condition I'm adding just for the you know, sake of this video that we only want to trigger the workflow when we hit the empty checkbox and check it. Okay, so to do that, what we're going to do is we are going to create an automation in Make and we have to do this because there's no native integration between the buttons in Airtable and Make. Of course, there's a way to use Airtable as a trigger in, in Make or Zapier, but we want these workflows to get triggered on demand, meaning when we hit a button. So we want to control the trigger from within Airtable, and that's why we have to take this approach. Okay, so what we're going to do for this one is we will say where we have to choose a, similar to how you choose a trigger in Make, you have to choose a trigger here, and I'm going to choose when the record is updated trigger. And then we have to go through the basic configuration, select the table, which is table one in our case. The view can just be the regular view. And it asks you for a question here, which says, which fields do you care about to trigger this workflow? Which fields should have been updated for this workflow to get triggered, essentially? And the only field I care about is the button field, because that will act as our button. So only when the button field is updated, we want this workflow to trigger. But the problem is it will get triggered both when I check the checkbox and when I uncheck uh, the checked checkbox. <laughs> There's a lot of checkbox there. But you get the idea. We only want to trigger this when we check it. So we are going to add a condition here and we'll call this uh, conditional logic. So here we will say only run this workflow if the 
button is checked. So this will not pass this field or this check if this is the other situation. And if it does pass this, we are going to run an action and the action is going to be a script. Now, if you don't have access to the uh, scripting in your table because it's a paid feature, you can wait to watch the second approach, which doesn't require the scripting, but there is a drawback to that approach, which I will mention here in a few minutes. So here, what we need to do is we need to, first of all, pass in the name from the record so that we have access to the actual name value. And it's just going to be the name uh, from the contacts table. And then I have a little script here that we can grab. If you don't know JavaScript, not to worry. Chat GPT is well versed in Airtable scripting language. So you can prompt it to give you the script. It's, it has done pretty well for all my situations so far. So I'm confident that even if you don't know any JavaScript, it'll be able to help you. The only thing missing here is the actual URL. So let's just grab it from, from here. So copy address to clipboard, go back here and then paste it here. So now what it's going to do is it's going to get the name from the record when we check the checkbox. It's going to pass in the name to the, uh, the make scenario. And then it'll wait for the response and grab the text from the response. And first of all, it's going to log the response here. So we'll be able to see it here on the output box. And then it's going to set that same text, same piece of text into a variable called response, which we can then use to update our table. So let's test it once. So let's test it and run test. And let's select Jane Smith and let's wait for the output here, see what we get. There we go. So it went through. So as you can see, the name is Jane Smith. So very good. So it seems like our make scenario was triggered because we got the response that we expected. So let's finish editing here. And then one more thing we need to add here is to update the record and it'll be the same table. And the record ID is going to be the one that triggered uh, the workflow in the first place. And the field is going to be the output field. And the value is going to be whatever we get back from the script here. So once I click on plus, we have the, it says use data from, and I'll say use data from the script. And the output is this response. There we go. That's pretty much it. And we can rename this to checkbox trigger. Of course, you want to use better naming, but for the sake of the video, we'll just keep it pretty obvious. <laughs> so this is the checkbox trigger and let's turn it on. This is now turned on. Let's go back to data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to make and I am going to run this once. So it's now listening for our request to come in. And let's see, let's select Emily Davis. So let's hit the button and look at make. So once the Airtable automation kicks in, it should call the webhook and we should see that coming in here. And there we go, boom, boom. And the output is the name is Emily Davis. Now let's go back to Airtable and see what we get. And there we go. We even got our output logged here in the output cell or the output field. Very good. The only thing is, what if the name changes or any other data changes? What if this changes from Emily Smith, right? Now I want to run this again, but it's already checked and I cannot run it now because it's already checked. So to work around that problem, to complete our loop on the button, we can go back to the automation and in the update record option, what we can do is we can also un select it. So we'll say take button one and set it to empty. So now every time it runs a script, updates the value is going to also uncheck it. And so think of it like when you're on a flight and you call the flight attendant button, the first thing when they do, the first thing they do when they come to your seat is they turn the light off so that you can turn it on again. So it's a similar situation. We click on update, go back to data, and I'm going to uncheck this. Uncheck won't do anything because our Automation is set in a way that it only runs when it's checked. Let's make sure, yeah, this is all updated. It's running and we have clean data here. So now this says the name is Emily Davis, but here the name has changed, it's Emily Smith. So let's go to make and run it again. Although it is running, but I'm just doing it just to make sure that we can capture it. So let's hit this again. And now we have clicked the button again and let's look and make, still waiting. Irritable automations take a few seconds sometimes. They're not instant. And there we go, it just came through. So now we see the name is Emily Smith. And if we go back to Airtable, this is now updated. And also the checkbox got unchecked. So now I can run it any number of times I want. And every time it will update the data and then uncheck the checkbox. Very good. So that is uh, option number one. Of course, as I said, this requires access to scripting. And uh, if you don't know JavaScript, you can use ChatGPT. If you do, then, then you should be good. So that was this button one. Now let's talk about button number two. 
Hey, if you're enjoying this tutorial, you might want to check out No Code University, where I have a ton of practical courses on similar topics, including Airtable and Zapier. You can learn everything you need to know to unlock high income opportunities in the no code and AI space. To get started, you can find the link in the description below. Now back to the video. So this one you can use if you don't have the paid version of your table. The only drawback with this is going to be that we won't be able to log the output here. You can, but again, you need the access to the paid features and I'll show you what I mean. So the button fields. So we're going to add one more button here. We call it button two. And for this, we're actually going to use the button field. There we go. So we select the button. So here you get a few options. You get to name your button. So I'm going to label it log name because this is the name you will see once the button is created. And this is the name what goes here, but this is the name that you will see in the actual cells. For the color, let's just select something here, go with purple. And then this is the most important part. So this is the action part. Now you have two options here. One is run script and one is open URL, right? So run script again is a paid feature. If you go with that, you can basically connect this button directly to JavaScript. So you don't even have to go through automations like we did in button one. It will basically, there will be a script dedicated to this button that will run every time you hit the button. So you can do that to call the make webhook or anything else and then get the output that way. Or if you want to go with the free version or the easy version, all you have to do is click on the open URL option. And then here you get to provide the URL, right? So the URL is going to be pretty straightforward. Let's just copy it from here and go back here, enter the URL and you need to enclose it in quotes to make it a string. And for the name part, let's remove John Doe. We want the name to come from wherever we hit the button. So you can just grab, and if you are table formulas, all you have to do is grab the name of the field. So now we just give it name and you can already see down here that it already knows it's a John Doe. So this URL will become this thing, name equals name, whatever we hit the button. So let's create this field. Awesome, so now you see we have a button here which says log name. So let's close this and let's try this button out. So what will happen is as soon as I hit the button, so let's pick a name here, let's say James Taylor, log name, it will open this URL or basically it ran the webhook behind the scenes and gave us the output right here in the browser. So now you can take this output, copy it and paste it here. Of course, this is a hypothetical situation so it doesn't make any sense, but let's say uh, you were using this to trigger an email or send a WhatsApp message or something like that. It will do its thing, send the message and then just say, okay, the message was sent or whatever you respond with from your make scenario. You could also do a redirect. So in the WhatsApp scenario, and I will have a video coming up uh, on that, you could do send the message and then redirect to WhatsApp uh, window in your browser so that you can actually continue the conversation there. Uh, so that's an option as well. But as I said, you, have, you can either connect it to a script or you can just open the URL uh, directly in the browser. Uh, and the only thing to remember here is that all your data will be passed in the URL. So make sure it's not sensitive data and something that you're okay passing in the URL. So that is option number two. And the last but not the least is the interface option. So. If you haven't used Airtable interfaces so far, uh, they have come a long way and starting to look really good. And they're almost looking fully polished apps at this point. So let's go back to Airtable and see how we can use or trigger a workflow, a make scenario from the button within interfaces. What you have to do is you have to go to the interfaces tab here. And I already have one here called contact. So let's just go in, in preview mode. What we see here is a list of records, and these are coming, of course, from my data in the contacts table. And when I click on a record, it gives me the details of that contact. So it's a pretty nice basic interface. You can, it's pretty handy. You can go through all of this, you can search and all that stuff. Now, let's say you have a situation where someone on your team has access to this interface, but they don't have access to the data where the buttons live. So you want to give them an option to be able to hit the button from here. Let's say we want to trigger an onboarding email, or we want to trigger a message or we want to call them or something like that. So we want to be able to give them a button here so that they can take the action without having access to the underlying data. And in this case, we want to do the same thing. We want to call the make workflow. We want to get the output back and then log the output here. So to do that, let me go back to edit mode. So let's turn off the preview. They have a, a handy feature here, which is under user actions on the right, there's an option called buttons. <laughs> Ta-da, surprise. So here you can add an action button, but before we can do that, we also need to think about what will happen when we 
uh, click that button. So it is going to be similar to our checkbox situation, which is we are going to connect it to an automation. So let's go back here into automation and I'm going to duplicate this automation and I'm going to call this interface button trigger because we want to run the same script, except this time it will be tied to the button in the interface. So interface button script, and I'm going to change the trigger to uh, when a button is clicked. So you have all these options, but we need when a button is clicked and it only works with buttons and interfaces. It doesn't work with button in the grid view. So click on this and it says, are you sure you want to change the trigger? Yes, I am. And then it gives you some instructions to go to the interface and select the button and all that stuff. So now that we know the name of the automation, we can go back to the interface, add an action button. And when we hit the button, uh, we will label this log name. And the action is going to be run a run an automation. And the automation is going to be the one that I just created, that, which was interface button script. There we go. And let's change the name also to blue. It is still grayed out because the automation is turned off. So let's go, let me close this tab. Let's fix this automation first and then we're going to turn it on. So first thing we need to fix is we need to remove this checkbox condition, right? Because this time it's a button, it's not a checkbox. So we don't need to have an extra check. So I'm just going to move the script out and I'm also going to move this update record out. And now I can just delete this whole thing. Perfect. And let's see what it's complaining about here. It says run script is untested. So let's quickly test it. Test action, run test. Let's just pick Jane Smith again. So whenever you create a new automation, you need to run your script so that it knows what output to expect to pass on to the further steps. And here, let's delete uh, the checkboxing since that doesn't matter anymore. And then output is still going to be the same because it's coming from the script here, which is the response text. Perfect. So now we can turn this on and it is connected to our button in the in the interface which says log name and now it has actually turned into the blue color that I selected because the automation is properly configured. Awesome. What we can do now is we can go into our make scenario and then run this again. And this time when I hit the button, we should see this run and then we should also see the output here in a few seconds as well. So let's, uh, let's go into preview mode and let's select a person here. Let's select Robert Anderson and then log their name. There we go, it's running. Let's look at the make scenario. Seems like it just came in. The name is Robert Anderson, perfect. And if you go back to the interface, even the output is now updated. That's amazing. Let's try for one more, Emily Smith. It's already there, Linda Martinez. Let's run it, give it a few seconds. Oops, why did I get my ad block? <laughs> let's try it again, there we go. The name is Linda Martinez. Awesome. But just to recap, we have three options to trigger make scenarios from, from your table. First one is a little bit of a hack with checkbox or a select field. It does require acts, having access to the scripting option. Second one is a button field where you can connect it to a script or you can just open the URL in a different tab. Uh, so pros and cons of both approach. And then the last one is the interface button, which again is connected to an automation, which further connects to make. And as I said, of course, you don't have to use the buttons if you're okay with just make doing its thing by using an air table trigger, you can do that as well. But if you want to be able to run these automations on demand on the click of a button, then you can deploy any of these three uh, different approaches. Awesome. So I hope you like the video and I hope it gives you enough to play around with and try this out. And as always, if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below telling what else you would like to see and what did you think of this video and how do you plan to use this feature. But for now, I'll stop here and I'll see you in the next one.